Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer. I'm a, um, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Minnesota. I couldn't think of the words there for just a second. Um, and I've been saying it every Monday night for the last four years. I think it was April four years ago when I did my first video. Um, and if you didn't see that, it was a kit we had way back when. So, hello and welcome! Thank you for joining me. I think I'll give you just a minute to find me. And I think when there's one person other than me, I'll get started. I think people will join me there. Somebody join me. Doesn't say who yet. So let me leave me a comment. Let me know that you're here. I do see the numbers of people. And it's Christine. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me. It's like family time here. So these are all the places you can find me. My website has links to everything else. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, and Instagram. And I have my own personal website. So if you go to my website, you can get to everything else. There's a place you can um, go to shop with me if you're interested in shopping for Stampin' Up! products. And emailing me is always a good idea. Um, if you have questions or suggestions for next week's video. So um, last week I shared that my mother-in-law was in surgery during my video. Um, she pulled through perfectly fine. Um, and is recovering from hip surgery. So Tony and I are going to go see her tomorrow. So that'll be fun to see her. I made her a card. Oh, it's upstairs or I would show you. Anyway, so hello, hello everybody. Thank you for joining me. All right, so this was my inspiration. Can you see that? Yes, you can. And this one. Oh, my, my lag is not very bad. We've been having internet issues here at home. So I'm hoping this isn't... Um, doesn't cause trouble. So this was my inspiration for this week. Um, I like the blue swirls. Um, and then I was thinking, how can I create the green and yellow backgrounds? So that was my thought process. Um, I couldn't find any swirly type stamps that we currently have. So I'll show you what I did to create my backgrounds. And then um, I'll create some more backgrounds. Do you recognize... Which way does this go? The stamps here, the blue, uh, let's see, Pacific Point, Mango Melody. Here I use Parakeet Party, and I think this, I don't know if it was Sweet Sobe, I don't remember. Um, my cardstock here is Mango Melody, and then I used uh, Shaded Spruce there. Um, so the, I'm using stamps, and that's why I titled this video, Let's Use Our Stamps. So I'm using stamps to create my backgrounds today. These two were done on watercolor paper so that I get that I can get that coloring with lots of water and my paper won't warp. So the stamp I used for those two, and I have some more, was the Oceanfront. And I only use this stamp... Um, on these backgrounds and I like that it gives more ink on part of the stamp and less ink on part of the stamp and you'll see that I've added my own and I wish they put it on the stamp set and they don't that this is a distinctive stamp if you look really close and I don't know how close I can get with my video you can see that there's just little dots so it leaves little dots of ink and then when we add water to it on our watercolor paper, you can play around and get that to spread. So these were the first two I did. This was actually my, my second one. This was my first. I was using all the shapes from the ocean front um, and just playing around with colors. And they kind of look like clouds, don't they? So it would be kind of interesting to, to do something with that. So there's a couple backgrounds that we could use. Um, I have a couple more that I could show you. This sprig comes from the queen bee. So, like I said, I didn't have any of the swirls um, that I had on my Kleenex boxes. Let me get rid of those. Let's toss those aside. This big stamp here is this one here. When I'm stamping on watercolor paper, I do like to use a stamp positioner, and ours is called a Stamparatus. If you have the old corner square with the um, acrylic pieces, that works too just any stamp positioner so that you can stamp multiple times. All right, so that's where we're going, and I have some other samples. I loved this stamp set when it came out, and I haven't used it much, so I thought, well, rather than using multiple colors, what if we just used two shades of green, and this is Soft Succulent and Evening Evergreen. 
I don't know that I like it, so I don't think that th I would use this as a focal point. I might put, you know, a sentiment on top of it or something. Um, I'll use it in a card and that'll be kind of fun. If you don't plan on using a lot of water on your stamping, I guess is the way to put it, you can use cardstock. This is just um, basic white and I, it doesn't feel thick. I don't know if it's thick or not. So there I stamped the butterfly in uh, Blackberry Bliss and then I use my water um, painter to um, add the water to the stamped image. And here, I this is what it looks like with water, and this is what it looks like without water. It is the same paper, same stamp, same ink. So I really like it better with the water than without. Um, I don't know why, um, but I do. It's just a preference. And then rather than trying to leave the floral or the sprig white like it is here, I just went over it, and that was really quick to do. So that was kind of fun. Um, so I guess play around with your stamps, play around with your paper. Like I said, if you're not going to put a lot of water, like here, I used a little bit of water and it worked a little bit, but that's nothing that um, uh, adhesive wouldn't take care of. I would not try to do this, these, on regular cardstock. So it, like I said, it depends how much water you're going to add, whether you need um, watercolor paper or not. All right. Um, I do have my catalog here, and that Oceanfront stamp set is on page 88 of the current annual catalog, and you'll see that distinctive um, trademark there. So, and again, that was the stamp I used for those backgrounds. So I thought, well, what if I use something that's not a distinctive stamp? So from the season of Chic, I used just this, I was going to use this swirl, but I decided to use this background. Um, and again... The more water I added, the better I liked it. This one is actually Daffodil Delight and Flirty Flamingo. And this one, I believe, was Parakeet, no, Poppy Parade and Daffodil Delight. I like the lighter one better, so we might use this in my sample when I stamp on it and make a card. Um, adding lots of water, I got them to swirl and then create the orange or the peach between the yellow and the red. So it's kind of fun to play around with different color combinations. And that's where my idea for the two-tone green one came, but it didn't it didn't come out as well as I thought it would. All right, let's keep moving. I have lots more samples. Um, I don't know if I think I have any more completed cards. Um, another one that is a distinctive stamp, the Hydrangea Haven. It's in the annual catalog. And I was really looking for stamps that just had these, like, shapes. So for my next two samples, I used this shape, and it was really fun to do. This one is just on white cardstock, and I did not add water. I just stamped multiple times, and that's kind of a cool background. I think I'm into the bright colors today because we're still in winter here in Minnesota. Again, this is Daffodil Delight and Flirty Flamingo. This is on watercolor paper, and I used that same stamp, this oval, that I believe is supposed to be the color in this stamp. Um, so this I added water. So the difference, these are the same colors, same stamp. This is what white cardstock, no water added. This is watercolor paper with water added. And they're a little different, um, but just depending on the background you're looking for. And I'm going to use one of those. Um, okay, I have one more here. Sorry. Um, and then I played around using these two stamps. These are not full size. They are at 75%. So this is the stamp. Um, um, I'm, not quite, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to show you today. What I'm going to demonstrate, I should say. So I used this. Um, I can't remember. I didn't write down what colors I used for that. And then I added water. For this one, I used what's called the rock and roll technique. So you... Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I don't know if I have paper handy to do that one. Oh, I don't mean. Let's start with that. That's kind of the most dramatic of all. So I'm going to take just this large hydrangea. You know what? I'm not going to do this. I don't have ink to do it. Sorry. Um, maybe if you don't know what rock and roll is, leave me a comment, and I will do that for a, um, another video soon. How's that? We'll do that. Um, I am going to use this one, though, in how 
showing you how I stamp on these. So I'm going to use my Stamparatus, and I like to put a stamp case under this um, piece here. Load that up. Because this stamp, oops, this stamp is all one, if the leaves and the flower were separate stamps for the detail portion, I would use two different colors. Um, but because it is one stamp, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to line this up. Make sure you can see. Yep, good. I'm going to line this up where my flower is. And pick it up. And this is a photopolymer stamp, so it doesn't have cushion. Actually, I have to redo that. I'm going to add cushion here. That black um, cushion does come with the Stamparatus. Let's try this again. And I'm looking through the looking at the color through my stamp, and I obviously have used stays on with this stamp, or it wouldn't be black. I'm gonna ink this up. I don't know if I'm on camera. I am. Ink, 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 and using basic gray. It's a little less harsh than. Um, the Tuxedo Black Memento, and pushing right where the stamp is. And it's not bad, and I'm off center a little bit, but because I couldn't see the image through the black stamp. But anyway, you get the idea. So now I can I would cut that down and use that on a card. I think I'm going to use these on. Um, I'm going to make cards out of them, and they will be on my blog on Friday if all things go as planned. So that's what I would do with my backgrounds. So if you want to see the card I make with that, come back on Friday on my blog. All right, I'm going to clean this up. You see, I've got a mess in my video. Let me clean it up a little better here. All right, that was the hydrangeas. Kind of fun. Sit that down for a minute. Okay, now how did I create those backgrounds? I want you to see it in action. I have a couple pieces of watercolor paper here. Okay, and then I have Daffodil Delight and Pool Party. If you go back to kindergarten days, and if you mix blue and green, I mean blue and yellow, we will get some green. So I want to choose a stamp. That's going to give me lots of ink. Um, I think my choices are going to be uh, maybe that one again or this shape again. I like, like I said, I like the distinctive. It gives me a little different um, ink coverage or ink application to my cards or to my watercolor paper. Let's do something different. Let's use this small. It's supposed to be a rock, I think, in our ocean front. I, I'm going to use this stamp. I need a piece of foam. I'm, I'm, I'm just stamping, so I it's again a photopolymer, so I need a cushion under my paper. And then we're going to start with yellow. I like to start with the lightest color and make sure I get a lot of it. So I'm going to ink, 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 stamp, and just twist it around. I'm really just putting ink on my watercolor paper. So I want some places that are yellow, and then I'm going to have some places that are blue, and places where there's both will be green. I did kind of try this ahead of time. I thought about using So Saffron instead of Daffodil Delight, and it's just such a smoky, dusty color. And I feel bad. I loved smoke, um, So Saffron when it came out. And I use it a lot, actually, in the fall for my card bases. Instead of using white or vanilla, I like to use So Saffron. But hopefully you are aware that we have a color refresh coming in the next annual catalog. As a demonstrator, I get to see that on Wednesday. 1 o'clock Mountain Time. It's been on my calendar for weeks, so I'm very excited. So my newsletter this week will talk about the color refresh. You can sign up for my newsletter at NorthStarStamper.com. 
and Thursday I will share some details about the color refresh. What colors are being retired? We know some former in colors are coming back. All right, so I just added lots of ink using the rocks from the Oceanfront stamp set. Now we're going to use a water painter and just add water. Hopefully you can see. Good. Let me get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm putting quite a bit of water there. And if it gets too green and I want to leave it yellow, you can pick it up with a paper towel. You can see I picked up a lot of the yellow ink. And you just blend as much as you want, as little as you want, till you like the background. I think it does lighten up a little as it dries. But I will show you what I do with this background on my blog on Friday. I do like to let these dry completely, like overnight, um, before I stamp on them, like I did with the hydrangea. I stamped that hydrangea this afternoon. That was just on white cardstock. Okay, let's have some fun here. Um, so that dried quickly. This watercolor paper does take longer to dry. Now I'm going to swirl around where my yellow and blue meet. My daffodil and pool party. You can see I'm getting some nice greens. And I would just go do the whole thing. Play around. I feel like an artist. Use your stamps just to add ink to your paper. And then... Um, Play around and adding water to create your background. Let me just stay over here. I'm going to clean my brush, get as much of the yellow and green off as I can, and I'm just going to stick with the blue right down the middle here. This will be fun to make into a birthday card, just so bright and cheery. There. And just keep going. Blend that out. I love putting ink to paper. It is just so fascinating. Let me look at comments real quick. Well, I think I can color and read. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. All right. I think we're good. I don't see any questions. People saying hello. And Kathy asked about my mother-in-law. Thank you. And then Kathy from Pennsylvania found, found me live tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so this will make a bright card. I will probably stamp with Knight of Navy on this. Just, I want to be done. You get the idea. It'll, it's fun to play around with color combinations to see, you know, when they blend. Again, go back to your kindergarten um, color theory back when you learned that red and blue make purple. That'd be kind of fun to play with. We do have purple ink, but it'd be fun, kind of fun to create something different. So a few stamps I have that we can use on these. Oh, I have a few of them, don't I? I'm going to set this up here on my... Um, I keep looking at this stamp set on... I have a turn, the thing that turns. Um, and I keep forgetting that these are separate stamps. My circle and my hexagon. The we are thankful we are friends is not in the circle. It fits in the circle, but the circle and the hexagon are separate shapes. So I think I'm going to use these today and make a fun card. Um, uh, you know what? Maybe we'll use both. We'll see. Just for variety. And then um, I thought these open stamps would be good. It'd be fun to use this, um, the decorative borders, and that's in the mini catalog. And then my go-to greetings, I'm going to complete a card and use that. So because I'm going to stamp a Knight of Navy, I have a piece of Knight of Navy and then a Poppy Parade card base that we're going to use. So I'm going to grab my Stamparatus again. Again, these, are these all? This one is not on watercolor paper, so I probably could just stamp that. But we're going to stamp on the ones that are watercolor. So this is Daffodil and Flamingo. Oh, that's Flamingo, not Red. Is that, what does that look like? That? Oh, I was going to use this one. All right, it's all coming back to me. I only did this 10 minutes ago. So this is four and a quarter inches wide, so I have a layer of navy behind it. So I'm going to stamp on this in navy. 
I also have the botanical garden um, layers. I thought, you know, I like this stamp a lot. So uh, we're going to use this photopolymer. So I'm going to leave this um, cushion under here. I'll put my go-to greetings underneath. And I'm using this because I want to be able to stamp these multiple times in the same place to get a nice, crisp uh, Night of Navy image on here. So I'm going to pick that up. How are we doing on time? Oh, good. Good, good, good. Andrew is on the other side, and he's like, oh, sorry, guys, I have to be quiet now. So he's trying to be quiet. So you don't hear him burst out while he's playing his video game. So there's one. I'm hoping you can see that. It's not as thick as I would like, but that's that works. So now I'm going to move it. Oh, this is stamping a lot better because I think because that's so thin. Um, there's not a lot of ink on it. I'm getting very nice crisp images on there. So let's just keep moving. Let's re-ink and try again. It was pretty good. Let's add a few more. I can tell where it's going to stamp because this part of my um, image was stamped on my background. Alright. Maybe one more. How about there? Let's clean this up a little bit. Ink, ink, ink. My case on behind my plate is keeping it flat. This is not flat. Why is it not flat? I don't know. There we go. And there's our nice background. Just for variety, I'm going to add, and I have time, I'm going to add some circles. I'm going to use a piece of chamois to clean up that. Rather than taking that off, I can take this plate and flip it around and add my circle. Let's say I want my circle there. Uh, we can move this. So now we're going to use the circle. I have die cut some banners with the stylish shapes in white. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. With the dots. Let's put this here. So I guess with these stamps, I didn't really need to use my Stamparatus. Um, I did with that that first one I showed you with the sprig from the Queen Bee stamp, because I stamped probably four times before I got a nice image. But this one seems to be working. Okay, let's put a couple more. And then we'll finish our card. So it's just kind of fun to use different stamp sets together. And creating my own backgrounds. See there, I don't have a very clear image on there, so let's ink it up. Make sure I push right where the stamp is. There we go. Clean this up a little bit. I'll just put this to the side. Clean that up later. I'm going to leave my Night of Navy ink out. So there's our background. With this just like that normally i don't like using white when i use watercolor paper because the watercolor paper isn't white and it's not vanilla but i think this will be let's see how do i want to do this i think i do like it there we'll just pop it up yep. and i go to greetings I'm hoping this bigger happy birthday will fit yes it will So look through your stamps and find some shape that you can stamp a background with. I do not want 
this underneath anymore. That's why it was wobbling on me. Uh, this is why I have multiple. I have a halo on there, and that just drives me crazy. I need to trim that stamp. If that's if this stamp set does not re retire, I will be trimming this. Let's make sure this is flat. And I have to make sure I don't. There, perfect. Make sure I don't wobble. Okay. I need some adhesive. Oh, I had two of them. So there's our background. Isn't that pretty? Oh, wouldn't that be pretty to stamp um, fl um, leaves on there? That'd be great for a fall birthday card. And instead of using blue, I would use um, early espresso and make it a fall theme. Let's see. That would be pretty. I'm going to center this on here. These are all four and a quarter inches wide. So I'll turn it over and give it a burnish. I burnish from the back so that I don't move the, the smaller layer. Now I'm going to put it right in the middle. So there's that. Let's use some dimensionals to put this on here. So you probably saw I had you know, just use whatever, um, whatever you have on hand as far as embellishments and twine and ribbon and it's kind of like we're making our own. I'm gonna put it down at the bottom so you can see more of that. Um, it's kind of like we're making our own background paper. Oh, I don't know if that's shadowy. That sounds dirty. Let's do this. Let me find the rest of my cards. Uh, thank you. Where is Andrew tonight? He's on the other side, but he's being really quiet. Oh, and then I'm, I have, um, I cut some, here I can show you what this is going to look like when I'm done. Again, come to my, come to see me, come see my uh, website on Friday and I will have those, these posted, um, in a blog. And then this is the one we made. It's still very, very wet. And I'll um, stamp on here. Maybe, um, maybe I'll use the botanicals. I really like this one. These are my two favorite. Um, on there in probably shaded spruce. And so make the green pop like I did here. So that's um, my video for tonight. Use those stamps to create backgrounds. Add a little bit of water. Add a lot of water if you're using watercolor paper. Add a little bit of water if you're using white cardstock or any color you colored cardstock oh boy here come all the ideas use this on colored cardstock too you get a little um extra it's a little heavier than our white i think all right yes i mom i like the um, bright colors too i think i need spring to arrive in minnesota so thank you all for joining me happy stamping i take requests what do you want to see next week shoot me an email or text me um and let me know what you want me to do next week Again, um, demonstrators get to see the next annual catalog on Wednesday, so my newsletter on Thursday, hopefully midday, um, will be talking about the color refresh. Um, I plan on writing that up and talking about which ones are retiring. When those um, announcements are made, expect those colors that are retiring to sell out within days. So look at your... Um, favorite colors and see which ones are retiring and if you need cardstock or a reinker i suggest you get it quickly things will sell out once it's announced so um thank you for joining me happy stamping have a great week everybody bye